Good morning, friends. Good morning. It's Monday, June 22nd. Uh, I am glad to be with you for prayer this morning. This is a special day for me. I'll share that in a minute, but first I want to welcome you and uh, welcome you to Grace United Methodist Church. And this is just one of the ways that we stay connected during the pandemic. Uh, we have several activities um, and different ways to be engaged in ministry that you can find on our website, but we do Facebook uh, live prayer starting this week on Monday and Wednesdays, and the rest of uh, morning prayer can be found in recorded prayer on our website. So good morning, Sharon. Glad you have joined us. Good morning. It's June 22nd. Amazing, isn't it? Good morning, Carol. Glad that you're here this morning. I uh, hope that we have, um, looks like a gorgeous day ahead. The outdoors looks absolutely stunning this morning. Good morning, Denise. I have learned the trick of setting a fan up on my porch. And so I can be outside even longer than I thought I could with a fan that makes a nice little breeze. So that's been nice. Well, good morning and welcome. Again, I mentioned um, this is a really special day for me, June 22nd, because on June 22nd, 35 years ago, uh, I welcomed, uh, we welcomed a new person in our family. My oldest son, Eric, was born today, 35 years ago. And four years ago, uh, his son Caden was born on this day. So we uh, celebrate two birthdays in our family today and that's exciting. We had birthday Zoom yesterday complete with pinata and cake. <laughs> I would love to share some of those pictures with you. Uh, good morning Sheila and Eileen. Good morning Sylvia and Lynn. Morning Teresa, Victoria, good morning. Glad that you're here. Grab your coffee. It is uh, a good morning for us to be together in prayer. I uh, also have the candle lit and the remembrance of the light of Christ with us this day. It is a good morning to be together. I've posted a note uh, in our description box that you, we will be doing Facebook Live prayer in our summer rhythm uh, for the next couple of months, which means Monday and Friday, I mean, excuse me, Monday and Wednesday uh, at 9 a.m. we'll have Facebook Live prayer. And then there are uh, several recorded prayer sessions accessible on our website. So we hope you'll join in there. <laughs> Thank you, Carol, for the birthday wish. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Yes. Zoom does it all. Yes, we did two birthdays yesterday. Good morning, Nancy and George. Glad you're here. Wow. So, so blessed to see that you have joined us this morning. So this morning, uh, our theme for prayer is engage. Yesterday, during Pastor Drew's sermon, he used that word engage several times. And it really struck me that we most often use the word engage when two people decide to get married and become engaged. Uh, so engagement is a commitment. But in our faith journey, uh, engagement is, is also a commitment. Uh, but I think the engagement goes broader than that. So I thought we'd spend a little time uh, thinking about that word. Good morning, Jack and Ruth. Morning, Lynn. Good morning, Wendy. Oh, good morning, Wendy. Aren't you having surgery today? We are thinking about you and we will ask you, uh, ask for prayers for you uh, this morning. Good morning, Anna and Debbie. Oh, Debbie, so sorry about to learn that Matthew died. Uh, we have another, so we will add the Han prayer, Han family to our prayers. Um, we also had another loss this weekend. Renee Mason lost her son, Andrew. So our scriptures for engaged, uh, I chose from Luke. Um, first of all, let me just say that when you look up engaged in the dictionary, engaged means to participate 
or become involved. When you engage in something or someone, it is because you are, are attracted to it that it captures our attention. So in our faith journey, and John Wesley would say this first, that scripture is primary. It is the best way to grow in spiritual maturity. So engaging with scripture, letting scripture capture our attention, participating and becoming involved in scripture is primary to our faith journey. And we have a wonderful example in Jesus. Jesus read from the scriptures. He read from the scrolls. And in the fourth chapter of Luke, verses 17 to 21, here is what he read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to Jesus. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue was fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The word of God for us, the people of God. So in fact, Jesus became that word. He became the good news to the poor. He became the one to give sight to the blind. He became the one to set the oppressed free. I'm going to share with you a little bit about, uh, oh, good morning, Hannah and Lynn. Good morning. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Glad to know that, um, that your surgery is on for today. Good morning, Kana. So I'm going to share with you that um, just that idea of being engaged in scripture, perhaps um, letting one scripture work on your heart until it becomes who you are. Um, in the year 1999, there were a few verses that God put on my heart, and they worked on me for an entire year. And the words were also from Isaiah. They were different, but they were from the prophet Isaiah. But they assured me that God was calling me beyond anything I'd ever envisioned. I'd never envisioned myself becoming a pastor. It was not anywhere in my vocabulary. I hadn't really grown up in a church, and it wasn't ever a dream or a desire of mine. But these words became the, the piece that called me beyond where I thought I was and into ordained ministry. And they are the very words that um, were in my Bible. When you're ordained, your Bible is laid open in front of you and the bishop lays hands on you. And those were the words um, that were in front of me when the bishop laid hands on me 12 years ago. So, but I've been in appointed in ministry for 20 years. So that means I was engaged to the church for eight years before I committed my whole life to her. That's a long engagement, a long, a long process. And I will tell you, there have been exhilarating days in ministry, and there have been devastating days, and I don't get to choose. So to be engaged, I just want to be clear, is it's not a works at all. It's not something we do. God's faithfulness is ours to respond to or not. To be engaged is to respond to the grace that God pours into our lives. To be engaged means that God has captured our attention. To be engaged means that um, we are attracted 
to the grace that God has poured in. I want to encourage each one of us, including myself, to engage with scripture this summer. And on those mornings that we're not on Facebook Live, go ahead and work on a, a verse. Flip through your Bible and identify something that really captures your attention, something that might be already happening in your spiritual life. And, and look up those verses and remain engaged with them. Commit your life to them. Those words can become incorporated into your life, so much so that you will become those words. You know, in today's world, when someone becomes engaged to be married, it's usually an elaborate set of events that conclude with one person on their knee and one person having the opportunity to respond. Well, Jesus is on a knee inviting us to respond. Becoming engaged will lead us down a unique road where we are constantly becoming the bride of Christ. Yes, the bride of Christ. The church is referred to as the bride of Christ. And we may have our struggles during our particular time in history with this kind of twin pandemic, the pandemic of the coronavirus and the pandemic of the racial injustice and inequality that is in such turmoil. But it's our turn now. It's our turn to stay engaged and to become the word made flesh for the sake of the world. Yeah, I am so glad to be part of the church with each of you. Uh, your faithfulness encourages my faithfulness. Um, you all express and reflect some light of Christ that continues uh, to work in my life. And we need each other to stay engaged, to stay the course, to offer ourselves for the sake of the world, to become exactly the word that God has placed in our lives to become uh, so that we can fully express the love of Jesus Christ for our neighbors. Um, staying at home has been an amazing gift that you have offered uh, to our community. It has been a hard gift to offer and we've been able to stay engaged in that. So let's keep in our prayers the way that we, Grace Church, are called uh, to, to also be engaged uh, in this fight against racial injustice and in, in uh, being available to be sure that all people are recognized and given the opportunity to be involved uh, and to receive the gifts of grace that God has uh, for the world. So those are my thoughts of being engaged today. I welcome your thoughts, um, certainly either in the, in the comments or, or by email later today. Um, I'm, I'm just really thinking about this word engaged in, in deeper ways than I had before. And I thank Pastor Drew uh, for lifting that up yesterday. So again, uh, prayers for the Han family and the Mason family in the loss of Matt and of Andrew, and prayers for you, Wendy, as you go to surgery um, today. We also lift up Carol, um, who has MS. She has been in Georgetown Hospital and is receiving medical treatment there. Uh, Judy's sister, Exa, is home from the hospital, um, but still uh, dealing with a lot of back pain. Prayers for, for Kitty. Kitty has blood clots in both of her legs. Uh, prayers for Chuck, who is um, tested positive for COVID-19. And we also lift up um, our prayers for uh, Hannah. Uh, sometimes we call her Hannah Banana. She's one of our Sunday school children, and she is having a tonsillectomy on Thursday. So prayers for Hannah and her family. 
that's some of what I'm aware of for needs today. Are there others? Carol, praying for your mom who has shingles. Um, oh, thank you, Judy, for watching Just Mercy. Yes, that is a powerful movie. It's a very difficult movie, um, but certainly has some a life-giving message, and uh, I really appreciated that as well. So prayers for Jill and Rob um, dealing with, oh gosh, surgery um, and, and employment issues. Prayers for Jamie, who's having surgery on Thursday. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Um, Jill and Rob. I'm writing these down so I don't miss them. Yeah, glad that we can pray together. And Carol, your mom. Shingles are painful and difficult to get over. All right. <clears throat> well, let's center ourselves again on the light of Christ that is with us. The light that shines into the darkness, into the struggles the light that also brings us much joy. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we thank you for the way that you read scriptures and taught from the scriptures and, and the way that you fulfilled the word of all scripture. We thank you that you came to be the anointed one, the, the Messiah, the one who would provide good news to the poor, the one who would set the lame to walk again, who would give sight to the blind, who would set the oppressed free. We thank you for all the ways that you enter into our lives, the ways that you engage with us. We invite your spirit to move in our lives that we might continue to engage with the grace of this living relationship we have with you. And we ask your blessing on us as we move into these summer months that we might remember to engage fully in scripture, that no matter what our situation or circumstances are, that there is a word for us that you have just for us and for our lives. And it may be a word of comfort. It may be a word of solidarity. It may be a word that moves us to reach our neighbor in a new way. But we just invite you to, to work in our lives ever more fully because, indeed, we want to be the bride of Christ that says yes fully, that engages fully with the gift of the relationship we have with you. We lift up for your healing care this day, Wendy, as she goes to surgery. We lift up um, Terry's sister, Jamie, and Hannah, as they prepare for surgery later this week, we ask for your special blessing to be with each of these persons, that they might have peace and an assurance of your presence. We ask your special blessings on the medical team and all those that will be attending to the details of their needs. And we pray for their families. May the, this be a time that all involved are able to see your grace, your healing power, and your faithfulness. We pray this day for Carol's mom with shingles. We pray for Jill and Rob as Jill recovers from surgery. We pray for Judy's sister, Exa. We pray for Carol, who is in the hospital dealing with MS. For Kitty, who is dealing with blood clots in her legs. We ask for your protection and your care upon her. We pray for Chuck as he deals with COVID-19 and all those people that he is in relationship with and ask for your safety and protection on them. Thank you so much for the way that you listen to our prayers. For Carol's mom who has shingles, we remember her. Um, we lift up most especially those who are grieving and we lift up to you all those who continue to think about Nancy Miller and her family. We continue to pray for you, Jack, and for Julie, Julia and for Jeff uh, in the loss of dear Helen. 
We lift up and remember uh, Renee Mason, who has lost her son unexpectedly, her son Andrew, who was 29. And we pray for Matthew Hahn's family as they deal with his loss, a young 39-year-old. And we ask for your, your comfort and an assurance of your love and grace. Uh, help each of these as they grieve the loss of their beloveds to find some way to trust in this eternal life that is promised to us in Jesus Christ and to find some way uh, to seek the life-giving love of their loved ones um, that remains even in the loss of their physical presence. Thank you so much for the blessing of celebrating uh, family events together. Thank you for the blessing of those families that were able to celebrate Father's Day yesterday. We also thank you for the blessing of birthdays, and I especially lift to you um, my son Eric and my grandson Caden. Thank you for the joy they are in my life and ask that you uh, be with them in this year ahead to strengthen and, and guide them and pour out your grace upon them. Thank you for all those that we now lift in the silence of our hearts, those that are near and dear uh, that we love. And most holy God, as we go through this day, help us to see the places and the people um, that you illuminate for us that we might respond to and reach out to. Um, but again, we invite your blessing on us as we engage fully in scripture this summer, uh, that your word might be something that abides in us so that we can abide in you. And so we pray today as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this morning, um, just I, my computer's telling me it's having trouble with the video, not sure what's happening. Please access the uh, uh, music later today as you um, are able. God bless you all. Go forth and know that God's love is pouring out over you and God's healing power is available. Uh, for us all. So go this day in peace.